In 2008, the term data scientist was coined and later Harvard published the infamous article that brought the role into the mainstream. It became one of the most sought after careers of the decade. Over the last 10 years, I have personally worked as a data analyst, data engineer, and a data scientist. And if I could do it all over again, the role that I would pick is data scientist. So in this video, I'm going to share the exact roadmap of how you can become a data scientist in 2025. In the current job market, you need more than just coding skills to stand out. And you have clicked on the right video because I'm going to share not only the roadmap, but also how you can stand out in the current job market. So what does a data scientist do? Data scientist works with data to uncover insights, build predictive models, and help companies solve complex problems using advanced analytics and machine learning techniques. Now, this is a very simple explanation. In this video, I'm going to share six steps that you can follow to become a data scientist in 2025. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into step number one, understanding the data science landscape. The reason this is my step number one is because data science is such a big job family and there are so many roles within the data science job family that in order to figure out what exactly do you wanna do, you need to understand what a data scientist actually does. I mean, over the years, there has been so many roles that have been introduced. For example, 2024 was a big year for product analyst role. And I anticipate in 2025 and beyond, product analyst role will continue to grow. Product analyst is a hybrid between a data scientist and a data analyst role, for those who don't know. So the first thing you should be doing is understanding what are the different roles are that exist in the data science job space. If it's data scientist, great. If it's product analyst, great. For example, there is machine learning engineer, there is AI engineer, there is data scientist, there is product analyst, there are mathematicians, there are statistician. So understand what all these roles do and figure out which one do you wanna be. By doing this research, we'll give you a better idea of what you want to do and what you need to learn. Another tip that I can share here is that, let's say if you have a specific company in mind, let's say Meta and Google, what I would suggest doing is going to their career website and looking up for the role that you are interested in and looking at the job description and look at the key skills that they are asking for. Is it a product analyst role? Is it a data scientist role? Is it a machine learning role? So figure out what exactly that is and figure out your career path and your learning roadmap based off of that. So let's say you've done your research and you have narrowed down the role to be a data scientist. This is the exact roadmap that you should be following. Step two is I want you to build your foundations in statistics. Statistics is the key skill and toolkit that you will be using as a data scientist. A lot of people, when they give advice, they say like, start with coding. Yes, I will tell you to start with coding for maybe a data analyst role or for maybe your software engineer role. But for the data scientist role, I would recommend that you start with statistics so you understand the concepts, you master the concepts, so then you can apply it. And here is something that I've said in my previous videos and I'll say it again, coding languages, is a tool to apply data science. The core data science is statistics and machine learning concepts, methods, and ways to solve data problems. For statistics, I would recommend you to learn descriptive statistics, learn about measure of central tendency, such as mean, median, mod, variability, standard deviation, variance, and graphical summaries, such as bar plots, histogram. Also learn inferential statistics, focus on probability distribution, hypothesis testing, sampling, time series analysis, experiment design, my favorite topic, multivariate analysis, survival analysis, resampling techniques, and so on. Next thing you're gonna do is learn machine learning fundamentals. Here, what I would recommend is focus on supervised learning and unsupervised learning. For supervised learning, learn linear regression, logistic regression, decision tree, random forest, and neural networks. For unsupervised learnings, I would recommend learn k-means clustering, principal component analysis, also known as PCA, and anomaly detection techniques. Now there are tons of resources available out there that you can use to learn statistics and machine learning concepts. Another resource that I would like to share here is that you should be using if you aren't already is generative AI tools such as ChatGPT. For example, if there is a specific concept such as PCA, principal component analysis, and you are having a hard time understanding it, ask ChatGPT to explain it like they, it would explain to a two-year-old. It does a wonderful job. And what else do you need? Custom tutor at your fingertips when learning these tools. These are some of the other tools that I would recommend for learning statistics and machine learning. So let's say you have followed through step two, you have your statistics and machine learning fundamentals in place. You understand data science conceptually. 
Now it's time to apply your skills. The way you will apply is through coding. So coding in data science is a tool that you use to apply data science. So here are two languages I would recommend. One is Python, second is SQL. So for Python, I would recommend that you learn Python libraries such as pandas for data manipulation, NumPy for numerical operations, Matplotlib for visualizations, scikit-learn for machine learning. So master these libraries and understand how to use Python for data analysis. You can also pick up libraries such as TensorFlow and PyTorch for deep learning models. For SQL, you will be doing a lot of SQL. Yes, SQL is not just for data analysts. As a data scientist, you will have to write SQL to pull data, data manipulation before you can actually use Python and apply statistics on top of it. So chances are that you will be using a ton of SQL as a data scientist in addition to using Python. For SQL, I would recommend that you learn how to join your data set, for example, inner, outer, left joins, how to use aggregate functions, how to use subqueries, and also get familiar with advanced SQL functions such as Windows functions and analytics function because those come in really handy, especially when you're working with multiple data sets and you need to join them and make sense of the data. If you're trying to break into data science and looking for an interactive resource, then I want to share one of my favorite platforms, DataCamp, who is also sponsoring this portion of the video. I have personally been using DataCamp for years. It has interactive learning style, which I personally really, really, really enjoy, especially coding skills like Python, SQL, R, and more. For example, DataCamp's Associate Data Scientist certification covers all the essential skills you need need as a data scientist and you get certificate at the end. The program includes real world projects so you can apply what you learned before attempting the certification exam. You will get practical skills in Python, SQL, statistics, machine learning, and AI all in one place in an interactive environment. If I were starting my data science journey all over again, I will definitely consider DataCamp as one of my top choice. I'm linking the associate data scientist certification in the description below along with some of my other favorite courses on data camp. Now let's move on to step number four. In addition to Python and SQL, I would also recommend that you get comfortable with tools like Jupyter and Google Colab, as well as Git versioning control to push, pull, and review code. The chances are that as a data scientist, you will be pushing code for review. So you would need to understand how to work in a Git environment. In addition to the tools that I mentioned, I would also suggest that you get familiar with the generative AI tools, how to use generative AI in your day-to-day -day work as a data scientist, whether that is for writing code or analyzing the data or something else. In addition to SQL, Python, and the previous tools I've mentioned, also get very familiar with AutoML tools that you will be using when you start working as a data scientist. In a lot of the major tech companies and even smaller companies, AutoML has been taking off where it has all come down to plug and play. So as a data scientist, you need to understand your data schema, the problem that you're trying to solve, and the method that you need to use in order to use those tools. So definitely get familiar with it. If you really wanna take it one step further, you can also get familiar with ML ops tools, especially if you're gonna be working a lot with machine learning, ML ops tools such as ML flow, Kuber flow, because these tools are important for scaling machine learning solutions. All right, now that you have learned the skills, it's time to apply your knowledge by doing hands-on projects. Now I'll give you a project framework to think about how to apply and showcase your data scientist skill set. The way you would think about it is think about is your project showing coding and data applications. So here you can apply statistics and machine learning using Python and SQL language. You can work with platforms, data platforms like Kaggle, participate in data science competition, or create personal projects to showcase that skill. The second skill that you should be showing is business and product understanding. Show that you understand the business side of things, show that you understand the product life cycle and how you will be contributing as a product data scientist to the product's roadmap. Make sure that you're showing these skills in your project. The third obviously goes without saying is having solid communication. Showcase that you can communicate well, you are very analytical, you understand tech and non-tech languages, and you're able to take business challenges and apply data science to it and are able to solve it. So this is a framework that I would leave you with, coding and statistics, business and product understanding, and communication. Focus on showcasing those three skill set, whether you do five projects, six projects, or three projects. I'll let you decide that. There is tons of free data set available that you can use. For example, Kaggle has a bunch of data set that you can use. Google Data Search has a bunch of data set that use. If you're struggling to figure out what is the project idea that you want to do, 
I mean, why not leverage ChatGPT here? If there is a specific interest area, for example, if you're interested in understanding your credit card history, why not do some cool machine learning projects on your credit card spending trends and whatnot? And definitely use ChatGPT or other generative AI tools to figure out what that exact project could look like. All right, that brings me to step number five. Once you have done these projects, you have showcased that you actually know how to do data scientist work. It's time to create your project portfolio so other people can now know that you know this work. There are several ways that you can build your project portfolio. One of the ways that I would personally do if I could do it all over again is I would build my own website portfolio to showcase all the work that I've done. I would also post on LinkedIn, create micro blogs, whether I do it on Medium or make a post. And I'll also show it on my LinkedIn profile, as well as creating a GitHub profile and showcasing your projects there and then linking it to your resume. This will actually help your portfolio stand out to recruiters. So definitely don't skip this step. So let's say if you've done all the work, now it's time for step number six. Step number six is start working on your interview skills. I have said it in my previous videos and I'll say it again, interviewing is a different skill set than actually knowing the work. You can do five or 10 projects in the data scientist domain, but that doesn't guarantee that when you actually go sit in that job interview, you will pass. There are several nuances when it comes to job interviews. You are in a time pressure setting. You have to answer in five minutes. You're in a different environment. You're not allowed to access the tools, your computer and whatnot. So what you can do is practice those interviews, whether that is like coding practice or understanding, polishing your statistics and machine learning concepts, knowing how to do case studies, for example, if given a business problems, how would you think about it from statistics and machine learning, and then apply advanced analytics and data science solutions to solve that business problem. So make sure like you're using the tools such as lead code, start scratch to practice your coding skills, and also sitting down with a friend and an industry professional who can help you like mock interview and practice. So make sure that you go into that interview and are on top of your game so you can end up with the job offer. And let's say if you do end up with the job offer, I really, 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 really hope that you negotiate. When I started my first job out of school, I was able to negotiate $10,000. Back then, I had no idea people can even negotiate. It was just in I just wanted to ask for more money and I did. And my last job, I was actually able to negotiate $100,000 more and it's crazy how I did it, but I can't believe I was able to negotiate $100,000 more. So if you need that extra help, it's actually perfect timing because I'm introducing a masterclass which teaches you all the salary negotiation strategies, all the tools that are available to you. For example, what are the components of total compensation, base, RSU, signing bonus and whatnot, but how do you optimize on different components and what should you ask the recruiter? I'm covering this and a lot more in the masterclass with a lot of free tools and templates that you will be taking away. All right, I hope this roadmap has been helpful in guiding your journey in becoming a successful data scientist. Remember with the right steps and strategies, you can achieve your career goals and maybe even negotiate that extra 100K. All right, with that, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what other skills you should learn as a data scientist in the comments below. And I hope you're having a beautiful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.